so hi everyone good afternoon uh, thank you so much for joining and uh, those who are listening this for later uh, just to clarify we are not, not uh, professional so if we have any any uh, it is kind of just a discussion we are sharing our knowledge with each other um, that's the main idea still if you have um, any questions or anything during this discussion uh, please write in your in the chat or you can unmute yourself and you can uh, ask the questions so uh, the way we will move forward is um, we will um, um, I think all of you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, we can move forward with one by one questions. So just to uh, address the questions. So our first question is the basic questions. That is, what's the difference between ABB and ABCC? Like the difference. So uh, I we did some of the studies about this, and uh, we know ABB is the American Board of Bioanalysts. And ABCC is the American Board of Clinical Chemistry. And for ABB, they have the High Complexity Clinical Laboratory Director, which is SCLD certification. And the um, for um, Bioanalyst Clinical Laboratory Director, BCLD. Uh, so may you please give us some uh, differences, like like what what are they? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, let me start off saying that, you know, this is really a, a really interesting group, amazing group. I wish I was part of something like that, uh, you know, several years ago. And, and I, I get it. It's it's the information out there is really vague, uh, you know, even like lab directors that are, you know, like in training programs, they, they may not know all the answers to all these different, you know, different board exams and and then you have exams that are getting phased out like ABMLI you have exams that are coming in are getting more popular like the ACLD and and it's like the fellows or even the people who don't go through a fellowship you know it's 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 confusing you know and then there's like different training programs w within each exam there's like different things and some of them may overlap but you know overall they're you know they're different enough to you know cause a little of a you know some confusion you know to the you know to the young you know or, or to the lab director or to be, uh, you know, as far as these examinations and, and board certification. Yeah, so so I guess the question is, you know, what's the difference between HCLD and, and, and BCLD? And that really, um, it's the same thing. Uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these exams really comes down to what you wanna do, right? Like the BCLD, is basically think of think of it as an HCLD with two different exams that you need to take. You know, so so let's say I want to be a lab director. I don't know. Let's say molecular biology or molecular diagnostics. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the if I want to go to the AAB route or the mm -hmm. ABB, right? Because the ABB mm -hmm. is like under AAB, um, another confusing kind of uh, uh, naming system, but. So I, I go and take in the technical supervisor exam in molecular diagnostics, but in the same time, in order that just taking that by itself will give you the technical supervisor um, of ABB, right? Mm -hmm. and that usually requires a PhD and at least one year experience in you know um, leading you know in, in more of a supervisory role or or, or like an assistant director role um, mm -hmm. in a clear laboratory. That will allow you to be a, a TSABB. However, in order to get the HCLD, you have to have four total years, uh, you know, with um, uh, supervisorship or maybe an assistant director somewhere or in a clear lab as a technical supervisor somewhere, right? And mm -hmm. so once you do that, then you're able to take this general management exam from ABB. Um, putting those two together, your ABB, your TS ABB certificate, again, TS for technical supervisor, will be converted to HCLD. So now your HCLD, you're allowed to, you know, run laboratories in California, New York. Um, HCLD just got with uh, New York. Um, <clears throat> it was kind of a long battle to get them in there, but they, they were able to get in. Um, so now, all right, now, now you're legal. You're, you know, a high complexity laboratory director, but... Um, Say now you're working in a laboratory and the laboratory is expanding into like chemistry and hematology, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you know, as, as a laboratory director, it is, it is enough for you to have the HCLD in molecular diagnostics. However, you have, to, as a laboratory director, you have to have somebody delegated um, who can run your chemistry and hematology, like a technical supervisor, right? As long as you have somebody delegated, 
you know, you're, you're a legal lab director. However, if you want to run that operation and be like a technical supervisor and have like, um, and, and I just want to better your knowledge, uh, then you then you would convert that ACLD to BCLD by taking two more exams. So now remember, like, let's say ACLD is, you just need one exam, one scientific exam. And, and you know, we, as an example, we said molecular diagnostics, uh, but, now, say you take a hematology from ABB and then maybe a chemistry or a toxicology or, you know, microbiology, um, then you can actually convert that to BCLD. Um, now, is that really required, to be honest with you, in my opinion? Uh, if I wouldn't go for BCLD initially for just a, a beginning director. I only know one person who has BCLD. Um, if almost everybody else, like, has the HCLD certificate. And that's because it's not really needed. I mean, as an example, um, I have an ABCC in molecular diagnostics, but right now I am overseeing a, a, a laboratory that not just doing molecular genetics and molecular diagnostics, but I'm, I'm overseeing immunology. Why? Because I'm an immunologist by training. Um, I'm over also overseeing microbiology. Um, and I, I have a technical supervisor who's overseeing the bacteriology portion and, and me, I'm um, as a technical supervisor as well, right? Because as a lab director, you're qualified to be a technical supervisor. I'm overseeing the molecular microbiology. I'm also overseeing hematology. And, and so the reason I'm saying that is that as long as you have experience, all you need is the directorship qualification, which is one of those exams, right? Like there's like, I think nine or 10 of them now, um, that you can take. And it doesn't matter if it's in microbiology, like American Board of Mic Medical Microbiology, or you know, um, ABCC in molecular diagnostics, or ABCC in clinical chemistry, or you know, ASHI, which is the transplant. By the way, I, I was a transplant director for two years, mm -hmm. uh, deputy director actually. Um, and the ASHI people um, basically allowed me to to take my ABCC exam instead of their own exam. So, anyways, I went off in a tangent there, but I think it's. I think it's important to understand because there is no, like, as far as like, what do I do? Do I take the HCLD or do I take the BCLD? The big difference, if you want to think about it, is just BCLD is an extension of HCLD and HCLD is an extension of the technical supervisor certificate. HCLD is more than enough. I would recommend, if I, if I would mentoring someone right now, I would tell them just go for HCLD. You take one exam management, one exam scientific, uh, uh, you know, um, scientific exam, and that's it. You get your certificate, get your experience. Later on, if you want to take BCLD and get some hematology experience or whatever you know else you want to do, hey, why go for it? But it's not, it's not really gonna. I, I, I just basically yeah. what I'm trying to say I don't see the big advantage of doing BCLD at least right away. Yes, got that. Like initially, if somebody has the ACLD, they can be able to perform. And uh, doing all the responsibility, and uh, uh, maybe later if they require, they can go for BCLD. But uh, now yep. it makes more clear. I think the website <laughs> website was not uh, very much uh, good informative. So I think your yeah. your uh, your explanation was very nice. So uh, I think uh, now it makes uh, more of sense. I think in the ABB, I try to take this. I think they have the CLD, then public health and the embryology ALD. So now it makes sense. And then later they have the consultant and uh, I think supervisor, technical supervisor with masters or PhD and one year of experience, something like that, we, they can do that. But uh, I think you are right, CLD is better. The next question will be, uh, uh, I think oh, you already partially I think answered these questions, but sure. Um, um, yeah, like uh, which one is you know? Do you do um, molecular or 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 common? So mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you know if you think about it, like pretty much all these exams, ABC again, ABCC, ABMM, ABMLI, which is you know immunology. That exam, of course, has been phased out. That that's the exam that I was supposed to take and I couldn't take because. It got phased out a couple of years before I finished my fellowship. But all of these exams actually, they're they're really specialized, right? They're specialized exams. And but in the end of the day, if you have one of them, then you'll be able you're you're a legal 
um, uh, laboratory director under under CLIA. Now the question comes in is the specific lab that you're going to work in. They may say, well, you, you know, we we want an ABM ABMGG. Oh, we want uh, you know for the transplant. They may maybe you know somebody may be biased toward the ABHI, mm -hmm. which is now it's called ACHI, um, mm -hmm. and so it it kind of like it'd be easier like if if you want to do molecular, if you want to do transplant, or if you want to do immunology, you might want to take a maybe choose the exam that you think you're probably going to be, you know, uh, or the subject that you're going to be like doing, you know, the most of, or you're going to be heading the most of. It's gonna, if you're going to be working in a clinical immunology lab, well, maybe you want to take the immunology exam. And then maybe the laboratory also has molecular diagnostics and, hey, that's, you know, that's good enough. You just have the immunology. Um, but I would say the only common exam I know of is like the BCLD. And, and even then, even then it's not really common because you know, let's say you covered molecular, chemistry and hematology, where then you're left with microbiology. If you work in a lab that does chemistry and hematology, there's a good chance that they're also doing microbiology. And well, then you're not really covered, you know, technically, right? So um, it's, um, I would say, just go for the exam. And, and right now, the, 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 the big ones, I would say the ABB is really good. I really like ABB. They're really, are, you know, um, from my experience, uh, they seem to be very, you know, organized. I like the questions. The questions are like mm -hmm. very scientific and technical, and, um, mm -hmm. and seems to be up to date. Um, mm -hmm. Some other exams that I've taken, it's, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's <laughs> it's kind of been an interesting situation. Um, so, yeah. So I like, you know, I would say just go if you guys, you know, this seems to be a molecular group. I would I would mm -hmm. either go with HCLD, ABB for. Um, with, with this subspecialty of molecular diagnostics, and I really liked their exam there. I took that exam, um, and uh, or with the ABCC in molecular diagnostics too. Uh, but uh, I, I, I really like the technical portion of the uh, of the ABB in molecular diagnostics compared to ABCC. But the ABCC is really nice because it's a big name and. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, there's disadvantages and advantages. Like the ABCC in molecular diagnostics is. Um, it's nice because, you know, you have ABCC, but right now New York does not accept that exam as a laboratory. They're, like you have to actually like submit some extra experience and all of that, or you can just take the ACLD exam. And the ACLD exam was was also out of New York's, I, I can't, I'm not sure exactly the timing, but I believe around 2018, 2017, there was like a big fight going on. Like, you know, they wanted to have New York accept the exam, you know, so it's... And then that was well, the reason I'm saying that is like sometimes if when you want to go work in as a lab director, they might ask you to have a New York state license, California. Um, mm -hmm. These are kind of the big odd ones that seem to give you know um, issues. But right now, um, the ABB is doing really good. I, I would go with yeah. ABB. I love I like their study material. I like their outlines. They they their outlines match more of what's actually happening in the test um, mm -hmm. versus like you know. And I know those. This is one of the questions too, but. You know, we can get there when when, when we get there. But um, I to answer this again question to summarize, definitely yes. Go go in a specific. Just mm -hmm. choose one exam. Don't worry about BCLD. Don't worry about something common. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, you're going to be the lab director, and if you want, the experience is going to matter a lot. That's that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. And so, if you have molecular examination directorship. Mm -hmm. You end up getting experience in immunology. Let's say you mm -hmm. become a technical supervisor and you actually work in a bench as a director and you get experience. That's all that matters um, is mm -hmm. the experience. Yeah, don't worry about like, oh, I need to test for that and test for that and get a test for that. Um, I, yeah. In my opinion, the experience is just, it's, it's way up there. Yeah, I think, yeah, you were right. The experience is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter what, you are right. I think uh, New York is today. <laughs> I'm not sure about California or other state, but um, as I'm from New York, I feel like New York has a lot of extensive experience related uh, issue and they have this kind of uh, uh, problems with different kind of organizations of taking this and that. Uh, so that's correct. Uh, the second questions here, I think um, in our group, I think uh, there has one person who just um, passed the SMB exam. Uh, if you know, don't know the SMB, so just to give you an idea, ASCP um, started SMB, that is the specialist in molecular biology exam. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I think um, 
uh, what I learned from different people is that like, first of all, that SMB exam is very um, interesting because 94% of people fail that exam <laughs> till oh, now. Wow. Yeah, only I think um, uh, last year, I think there has only, I forgot how many people, but it is also very low. Like till now there has only, I think 26 or 27 people passed that exam. Um, and uh, uh, last year in internationally, like international of ACP international, there had zero people passed, meaning like 100% fail. So, so that exam people said like uh, it is kind of the like uh, ACMG or the ABMG kind of like they uh, uh -huh. they, prepare, they prepare that question because ABMG only have I think 40 or 42 people uh, fellowships per year in all the U.S. So they try to uh, prepare some of the supervisor or managerial level portions people who can be able to have enough knowledge to uh, to at least manage the uh, molecular lab something like this so th that was the idea that's why they just recently i think um, uh, started that so one of our members i think uh, she is very lucky and very hard working also she passed so she asked these questions so uh, suppose she has the phd she has um, i think 10 like more than 10 years of experiences now she if she wanted to apply for the abb or like abcc how she can provide the experience so she was checking the website and she saw some like logbook or something like that to prove that she has enough capability to sit for the exam so that was the background of the question yeah gotcha gotcha yeah so first of all you know congratulations to that you know to her for you know passing that exam i know i knew about the ascp regular molecular bio biology exam uh, but it looks like this new one I have actually haven't seen before. And actually, I was confused because I looked at your um, the the outline and of the test. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this stuff is really really strong um, for the typical micro, you know, uh, or molecular biology exam. So yeah, ACP is coming up actually with pretty good exams. There's they just came up with um, diplomat of uh, molecular laboratory immunology for direct mm -hmm. you know, immunology lab. So that's a new one that's gonna come yeah. up soon. Yeah, I think they just started from this April and uh, they required the postdoc several years of experience. You are right. Well, yep, yep. Some some of our members were discussing in the group that it just came up and they are interested, but they were not sure. I think it is not internationally um, available yet. It's only in the USA. Mm -hmm. So they were discussing that, but it is kind of interesting that, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. it's a it's a replacement for the ABMLI test, which is again the one that I, you know, me and the previous fellows around the time that I started were supposed to take. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, they went back and forth. I believe ABB wanted to do something with it, uh, but I guess ASCP kind of um, worked on that. But yeah, as far as the as far as the log the log book, she may she may be talking about the ABMGG. Th these are the guys that want a log book for, you know, for training and they want you to go through a specific fellowship. I'm not as familiar with them, but I know they like, they want you to log cases and writing cases, kind of like what the transplant community does. You know, you have to write cases and present that to the committee and do an oral exam and, and a written exam. But as far as ABB, if, if she's taking that, uh, that ASAP exam and passed it, I think the ABB is right. It might be even easier, to be honest with you. It's a 70-point question. As far as a technical supervisor, you don't need a logbook. All you, all you need is, um, if, you know, with a PhD, just documented experience, full-time, one year working. Um, and what, what ABB does is they actually send, you tell them which lab you work in, and then they send the, the, some letters to all these labs that you work in to document their experience. So if you know you worked in one lab, say, for one year, for, for no, sorry for four years um, uh, and as like a supervisor level or maybe technical supervisor that's all you need and then you just take the HCLD exam or she can do like the uh, well, one year experience in one lab and take the technical supervisor exam um, you don't need to log anything all that needs to happen is the lab director or, um, or you know the supervisor over there who's going to get the letter and um, to, to sign off that, hey, this person was titled this in this lab and they worked this many hours full time and, um, and I, you know, attest to that. Um, but I would, I know that um, there are some people who had some issues, like if they worked in big hospitals, you know, you want to make sure that you can contact the HR or supervisor to let them know that a letter will be coming. You know, if it's a private laboratory, you know, it kind of goes directly to whoever it needs to go to. 
but yeah, no, no logbook. I, I didn't have any logbook for ABCC and molecular, nor any logbook for um, the ABB um, exam. Just that, mm -hmm. you know, the ABCC actually, and they're all different, you know, ABCC wanted like three recommendation letters. And um, one interesting thing that I should probably mention here that the ABCC, so I initially signed up for ABB. I took the molecular diagnostic portion. Of course, I was an immunologist, but that exam was phased out. And all I needed was one year of experience. So I took the ABB, um, you know, got that test, passed it. But then ABB won't let me, wouldn't let me do a, a directorship certification until I finished four total years. And at that time, I was like three years in. So then I found ABCC and I signed up with them as like an alternative route. Uh, mm -hmm. They took my experience in research, they took my experience in the clinical lab as a fellowship, and mm -hmm. they also took the fact that ABB accepted me as to sit for their exam. So they were saying mm -hmm. like, hey, if you have a, if you've been accepted for a molecular diagnostic board exam, um, mm -hmm. let us know. So I attached that letter and all that counted in towards like, okay, this person is qualified. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's different things you can do. And I think in this case, the fact that she's taken that ASAP, ASCP exam, uh, SMP, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, so that's basically evidence to show that this person is ready to sit for their scientific exam um, in molecular. Uh, and, you know, especially with the fact that that exam, I guess, seems to be more of like a molecular genetics rather than, you know, just general molecular diagnostics, um, mm -hmm. which is what ABCC, ABCC is about. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, I think it would be good. She should definitely let them know about the results of that exam. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, hopefully, uh, I hope that they, if they have four years of experience in a CLIA lab as, you know, as a PhD or as a supervisor, then they need to, yeah, she should just apply right away. Uh, the only yes. hurdle is that, you know, the problem with ABB is it's May, they give it in May and October, and then you have to travel mm -hmm. for that exam, sit in a hotel, take a 70 point question with a Scantron sheet, a number two pencil, and then fly back home. So that's, <laughs> I, I don't understand why they do that. I think they've been asked by many stressed out, you know, exam takers that this is not really, you know, nice, but, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully they change soon. Yeah, yeah, you were right. I just wanted to mention, I, I called the ABB. I asked them uh, why you do that because I have work, <laughs> I have family, I have right. so you like ASCP. I can go to Pearson, I can go to the like for ABCC. I think Dr. Rich are gonna take it very soon, so uh, you can take it in the uh, computer because right. uh, it doesn't make in any sense. So, place. Yeah, yeah, you have CC camera. Just tell us we're gonna just put that so yeah you can do the proctoring yeah so uh, they said what happens is like to make it computerized they need little bit of more members so that financially they are enough able to able to take that so that was their question so i asked my next question was when you will be financially able to take that uh, <laughs> in the computer so that i can prepare according to that timeline so she, they, they said not near future so i think yep, it's, <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of stuck there for a while since um, 2018 for sure i mean I, well, the way i was thinking about it is like you guys are making me pay this much money in plane ticket and the hotel fees just take that money and just let me take it home you know what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You are right. You are right. It makes sense. Yeah. It will uh, save our time so that I can, I don't have to, I can spend more time with family or like, I exactly. can work. Yeah, yeah, you can just sleep in your own place and wake up, <laughs> drive out to the place instead of getting stressed out in a hotel. And, uh, you know, it's yeah. not, you know, it's not really the most nice yeah, situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, the next question, this is the very important question. I think Dr. Richa, yeah, if you wanted to ask this question, sorry um what study materials basically like uh, as dr richa is taking the abcc exam that is the mm -hmm. molecular biology part of the abcc so basically syllabus courses or guidelines and any practice exams or lectures you will recommend just to clarify i think we discussed in the um, uh, in uh, earlier also that abcc website is very vague and dr richa i think emailed them asking okay what is your study materials their answer was so much generalized and it, they did not uh, have give any like nicer study materials or that kind of things um, mm -hmm. abb has some of at least something in the website but abcc does not have anything so so yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah so um 
Yeah, so ABB actually, and this is why I really like ABB, you know, nothing against ABCC, but I, I stumbled upon you know, the same problem um, uh, with ABCC because their website is like, the outline is, I mean, you might as well not have an outline, that kind of thing. The ABB, they're actually really good because once you're, once you're accepted for the exam, they're gonna send you a, a, a relatively detailed outline compared to other exams. Um, they only do that after you get accepted to sit for the exam. Um, and so the outline is there. So you have like what's how much percentage of this material is going to be. You got 10 percentage of quality control, that much percentage of that, you know, you know, focus on these techniques and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and yeah, it's it's really straightforward. And then their their general management exam. Again, you have to have two exams to get the CLD. Uh, earlier, I was talking about the technical supervisor, the general management exam. They also send you an outline, but they they also tell you that. And actually, this is I'm I'm getting this now for, from people who took the general management exam. Um, I know two people directly who did that. They said they have a booklet. The ABB have a, has a booklet uh, for general management. And if you study that, and I looked at that booklet, I had it uh, for a while. It's basically you know going over like just general management stuff for personnel. Uh, management, but mainly about like quality control, levy genning stuff, um, you know, costs, uh, all of that stuff is in the booklet, whatever. If you just study that, that's it. That's all you need for the general management. Like you need to, you don't need to go anywhere else. And then of course, for the technical supervisor scientific exam, that one you're going to have to like go around and do different books. So that being said, I've, again, I've taken both the ABB and molecular diagnostics and ABCC and molecular diagnostics. And what I found is that generally the whatever you study it's really the same study material it's just that the abcc is not really um uh clear about it now of course they both of them make it very clear like for us not to talk about exam questions and all of that but but what i, I can recommend is uh i do have a list of the books that i feel like were very very important to go through like page by page uh, one of them, I think, is by Leila or Leila. Um, what is it? Leila Abraham? I can't remember. Yeah, Leila Buckingham, uh, Clinical Diagnosis, Buckingham, I think. Buckingham, yeah. yeah. For, I that think book we, is amazing. That book that is, is, yeah. that is our Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for, it, that book is great. For ASCP MB, for uh, like me and Jenny, we both passed the ASCP MB, that is the ASCP Molecular Biology. Mm -hmm. And uh, we studied this Lela book for ACPMB, they say Lela book is the Bible for that. Uh, and for also for the specialized molecular biology, uh, uh, that is also very good. Like we already studied, like for our group, that is the Bible for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's great. I think that book, um, there's also another, <clears throat> I can't remember the name of it now. It's a yellow book, um, basically goes over general molecular genetics and there's a lot of questions in the back of the book. And then the book also has a website and it helped me a lot too, where you go, each chapter has like five to 10 questions and, you know, some, you know, you go from basics and this is where all the exams are going to be. You, you're going to find like questions are like, you know, what, again, I don't want to talk, you know, I'm just talking in general, but you know, the, the nucleic acid bases, you know, this type of questions versus how do, you know, how do you interpret fragile X syndrome, you know, blah, blah, blah all this stuff. And, so it's going to go from like really, it can, it can be from really like basic stuff to high level interpretation. And so you really need to be um, really good with, with all of these, uh, with, with everything. So don't be rusty on, on the basics and just focus on like interpretation. Uh, go ahead and, and, and look at nucleic acid, the amplification techniques, um, all of these things. And, and, and that stuff is actually listed too. And I believe in the outline from, you know, from ABB. Uh, so I do have a list of books um, that uh, that were really helpful for me. So there is some books that I just read from front to back, and that one of them would be the Leela uh, Buckingham mm -hmm. book. That, that book I think I read twice, um, and then uh, the the other book I I can't the name kind of escapes my it's mind. It's okay. Right now. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you remember. But I was gonna say is yeah, I do have it yeah. in the list somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah. that I can send it to you. There's also yeah, like, sure, again, sure. case studies, focusing case studies. Um, I like, I like the cap case studies, mm -hmm. collect mm -hmm. all of those. I think they have them all on their website. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the cap magazine, there's like case studies in the end, um, with questions. This stuff is really, um, very informative and interesting and, and it will guide you through some like specifics that are, you know, me may not like cover. There's also case, 
there's also some books that are, again, I have those listed um, somewhere. I have to just go back to my um, study file. And again, there, there, one book is like literally just all cases. So it, it's, but if I can choose, okay, I know I mentioned one book, um, that the Leela Buckingham, and then there's this other book too. But there's another one, uh, you may be aware of it already. And that one kind of came out in the right time for me because that was about the time that I was going to take the ABCC. And this book um, is called Self-Assessment Questions for Clinical Molecular Genetics. Um, that one, <laughs> yeah, if you want to take ABMGG or ABCC, not necessarily AAB or ABB, I mean, um, yeah, you want to get that book and go through these questions because you just, isn't, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, the yeah with, uh, Nair or, um, I I or something, um, with yeah. the, like, you know, there are several questions there, are, I think five or six topics, but it has like 200 yeah. questions after each chapter. Is that the one? Something, yes. yeah, let me, let me just double check on the. I think uh, we have the, the books, you know. Yeah, Haiing Meng, Haiing Meng. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that That's one. Good. I mean, yeah. I've seen some like the Amazon reviews to, for it. I mean, yeah, there's some typos in here and there. And actually, there's a lot of repetitiveness in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in our case of studying, you know, you, you want to repeat as much as possible. So yeah. I, I highly recommend that book. I went through the whole thing, um, copied a lot of notes in it. It's going to be really important for all. I mean, it's made for the ABMGG crew, but it's a lot of it was applicable to ABCC as well. Um, now, again, now here's the thing is like, you don't want to just hyper focus in one area because the ABCC is going to go into molecular virology and, and microbiology and maybe some, you know, HLA and transplant. Um, and, uh, you know, some is going to go into like interpretation of even like high, even clinical questions, maybe more geared toward, uh, that was actually one of my complaints to them, like, you know, there's some clinical questions geared toward like actual, you know, physicians that mm. they don't really have to do with the lab director. Um, mm. Like, but anyway, you know, I think um, that question, uh, I, I feel like they need to update their, you know, their, their, uh, their exam bank, but I, I think they're doing that at the moment. However, uh, what I'm trying to say really is just don't hyper-focus into like clinical molecular genetics. You definitely need to learn that going to the PGX and, um, and you know all the different mutations and and uh, so that book combined with Leela Buckingham and I think um, that Leela Buckingham book has also has some case studies online you probably already saw uh, and there's a third book and there's a couple of more books too that was like <laughs> case studies so what you want to do is really is yeah cover your bases with the basics um, go through like one book and copy the notes down as far as like get all the basics down and then after that start focusing on questions just go go questions question after question solve you know the questions at the end of the chapters um then go into an actual test bank i even like the test bank from boc asap um that book that one is i mean it's it's a basic exam but there's some stuff in there that you know it's i've seen and then i forgot and then i saw it again and then i saw it in the exam you know so you know, I, I would go through that test bank as well. So the BOC ASAP exam in molecular and in management, um, mm -hmm. go through these two for sure. Um, and then go through the molecular genetics book, um, go through Leela Buckingham, copy down all the notes. You know, when they talk about fragile X syndrome, you know, you know make sure all that stuff. Uh, they, they, that, that book really kind of focuses in the big ones. You know, look at virology, you know, the HIV, all the ins and outs, how do you diagnose that? And that stuff is going to be really, um, really important. Uh, so, but yeah, I'll, I'll send you a list of what books, what books to, um, yeah. to uh, like more specifics. So the titles itself. I think uh, just to get in um, uh, discussion with the Dr. Rich, I think uh, whatever I will show you a list that ACP suggested. So whatever Dr. Bell just discussed, I think um, so in our, uh, we try to gather all the books. I think uh, it matches a lot of uh, the list that you just told us, like the self assessment, the Lela Buckingham, and we uh, for the microbial uh, portions of the molecular molecular microbiology. Uh, I think we had uh, some, and then um, uh, for the lab management, there has a harmonic book normally so i uh, in the acp these are kind of like the acp suggest for mb and smb uh, 
so I think uh, in the next question, so, okay, so I think we already discussed that, but um, I think these questions answers a lot of, like these questions we're gonna uh, uh, familiar with the, the discussions that we have. So SCP, SMB and the AVP, um, uh, from your discussions, what I learned is kind of very similar because in SMB also when we were preparing, so we have seen like, it is very much related with uh, like they have microbiology, they have HLA, they have uh, uh, they have the genetics, not only genetics, but also this kind of like uh, viral, how to do the RNA, like NASPA or the TMA, transcription media. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and also like which kind of uh, virus or bacteria DNA, uh, like, uh, or RNA virus, how we can detect that, that kind of things they normally ask. And also like how, what kind of diseases are related to that. So like medical things. So uh, just to give give some idea about this content area for the M SMB, mostly MB and SMB is kind of similar. For SMB, there has this uh, laboratory management they normally add. So these are the, I think, basic, uh, basic things like histocompatibility, genetic disorder, oncology, infectious disease. And they have this kind of very nice way of organizing, giving, some idea like which kind of things they will ask all the topics uh but abcc if abcc could give us this kind of things it would be very much helpful but as you said like abb normally gives that's very nice of them but um i think these are all the questions but before you go i will just gonna share one link with you and i think uh, i think this this is the uh, this is the link that um all the reading list that um, I think we already got all the list. Also, like whenever, um, if you find out the list from your reading team, if you can see, um, uh, send us, I think it will be also very much um, helpful for us. So um, can you please, um, I, I send a, a link in the chat. It's from the ACP, ACP content. Uh, I should just add that in, in our presentations, uh, but I, uh, but it's my bad that I could not. So just to just to uh, give you some idea, they they have some of the reading list uh, suggestions. So I think uh, people said Coleman's molecular pathology is a nice book. Then, um, then the Lella Buckingham you already told us. Um, so so do you do you think these these books are uh, uh also good for abcc uh, yeah for sure for sure I, it's whatever so i think yeah from my experience with these two exams i think i mean the the way they approach you know the person who's taking the exam is, is like it's different whatever they have the content i think the a the abb is focused like in technical um questions um you know, and uh, you know, also some basic questions. The ABCC also have some basics, but like I feel like the ABCC was more clinical, mm -hmm. uh, clinically oriented, like clinical consultation. But they are also getting really technical too. Uh, mm -hmm. But all of these books will cover cover your, your basics. The other one, um, I'm pulling up some of my list here. So Corf Corf Genetics. Um, let me see what the name of this book here. Let me get you the name real quick. Yeah, that's the website. That has all the um, the uh, questions associated with the book. Let me see here. Core of genetics. Um, yeah, it's called Human Genetics and Genomics. That's the name of the book. Not a not a huge book, but you know, I, I thought it was really really helpful. I think it was our, one of the first one that I read. Who is um, the author for that? This is going to be Bruce Korf and Mira Irons. Let me see if I can uh, post a link here in the chat. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I think human genetics and uh, genomics in good way. Uh, Bruce Arcor and Mira P. Irons. I think I saw this somewhere. Is this the, yeah, it seems a very interesting book. Yeah, I, I like it. I mean, it's, 
there are some really basic things I think maybe mm -hmm. not apply, but definitely go through the questions. And I believe their website has, uh, uh, let me see here, multiple choice. Um, yeah, so they have seven, yeah, for all their 17 chapters, they have a lot of, you know, a lot of good questions that are, you know, good, you know, you may know a lot of them already, but, you know, like population genetics and, mm -hmm. um, you know, going into carrier screening and things like that. I think going through like uh, an actual application applied question that would be really good. They also have this list of 100 genetic conditions um, that really helped me too. So it's like you click in the condition, you can make like a big folder out of it. Um, here, I'll, like I'll, I'll, I'll post a link here on that one. This is the website. Um, so if you, for example, if you go under, I don't know, cancer predisposition, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Cowden syndrome, for example, you open that up and then it tells you it's autosomal dominant, you know, what the genetic, um, you know, mutation may be and what the management is, which is not really as important. But what you want to focus on is inheritance, you know, ideology um, mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. Yep. Yep. You want to focus also on like um, paternal testing. You know, this is like you want to focus in management things, you know, the, the typical stuff like sensitivity, clinical sensitivity, analytical sensitivity. How do you calculate this? Every exam has that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So it's general, you know, it's, it's it would be all right talking about that. You, so these questions, you know, I've you know, it's they, they'll probably show up at, at some point. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, for SMB, just things. yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry? Go ahead. Uh, so the specialist in molecular biology, I think uh, um, the person who passed, she told us like, so for ACP, SMB, uh, it's more of bias with um, sequencing, like next generation sequencing. I see. Like uh, there has a lot of like they try to cover a lot of portions with uh, next generation sequencing that uh, also from the lab management like how to handle the lab management and also about the quality control of the specificity sensitivity um so do you think like uh, for abcc molecular it is also uh, very much uh, sequencing is a very important topics for for this lab director exams or do you think uh, only the clinical conditions or like cancers like mutations different uh, mutations related to cancers and uh, this will be the uh, the portions normally like like yeah, i think the cancer chapter is uh, in the, in lela book it's the chapter 13 and uh, mm -hmm. the the hla is the chapter 14 so so i think acp just uh, i think in july they they tried to um, change the syllabus so for the molecular biology as as i i'm more of like related to that so they just I think discarded the HLA, but as you said, for lab director exams, I think HLA is still very important. Yeah, HLA is going to be important, but again, HLA have like, if you go to the transplant, they, they, they have their own exam, and mm -hmm. the exam is obviously going to be focused on HLA, but they're going to be bringing a lot of molecular biology, and, um, and, and but then mm -hmm. if you take that exam and you go to an immunology laboratory um, mm -hmm. or a chemistry laboratory, you'll still accept it as a lab director as long as you have everything covered and, and you know, um, All the experiences. Or, yeah, qualified to do that. Yeah, but yeah, as far as, you know, your question about like the question on cancer and, and yeah, fo definitely focus on that. You, you gotta know the conditions uh, of the cancer in relation to the mutation. Uh, you gotta know how to interpret things and, you know, what, what it looks like for specific diseases. Mm. Um, I would, yeah, the NGS stuff, I, I feel like a lot of the exams that I've taken, they weren't focusing like the actual technicality of NGS, uh, but mm -hmm. you no, know, that might be changing. I mean, I took that exam in 2019. Uh, so, you know, I don't, NGS is so kind of like, it's not like a common thing like PCR where everybody does it. Like, everybody, yeah. yeah, people like Illumina and then some people do Thermo Fisher and, yeah. um, you know, and now you have Oxford. So it's, yeah. it, you know, they may, I would just know the basics about massive, you know, parallel sequencing and what that mm -hmm. means, because it's kind of the, 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 the stuff that are more common in, you know, in, in, in clinical laboratory, like the Illumina MySeq, I wouldn't, I would know what the Illumina MySeq is about and the, the general operation of it, um, just because it's like a very common sequencer. 
Uh, mm. So, you know, from 2019 to now, they, they, you know, they may have added something. They may have updated their, their questions. Mm. I think uh, I remember from my molecular experience, like um, they ask about the Maldetoff, about the, uh, from the microbial portions, like because Maldetoff is very common nowadays mm -hmm. in the in the um, uh, microbial lab or the molecular, like so. So they try to try to ask and uh, uh, get the ideas, like about uh, basic ideas of the Maldetoff. So I I feel like. Uh, I think yeah, all the discussions from molecular biology maybe it will be kind of similar, but the question will be a little bit deep and try to get some case studies and uh, uh, using the case studies or background that they, they may have uh, tried to get the ideas like how much poor level of understanding we have in that in that uh, topics. Maybe that's the that's the idea about this section. Yeah. But I think uh, for ABCC, as you said, I think it is um, um, it is I think takes um, three hours or four hours of um, exams. Something. Um, like that, right? I think actually the oh, I can't even remember now. It was a very intense time. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I think it was three hours, one hundred and twenty questions or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not. I mean, of course, the the ABCC in clinical chemistry, you have two different exams, and I think they're like four hours each. Uh, but you know, one one exam is like mathematics, so mm -hmm. like you just have to sit there and crank on math stuff. That one you just gotta sit down, sit down and do math to be to prepare for. Kind of like ACT and SAT, what you do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for the actual, and then you have the clinical chemistry clinical portion, where you interpret data and you have to know everything about the mechanisms and physiology and what that means with regards to the test and. Um, and that's kind of pretty much what the ABCC is going to do in molecular too. It's like, how do you apply this in there? And, and, uh, you know, or, you know, you got, you got a couple of, you know, this test has this much, but, you know, we, there's a correlation, we did a <laughs> clinical correlation and then this test yeah. is positive here and positive there and then negative here and mm -hmm. false negative there. And, you know, what do you think the positive projective value, you know, something, mm -hmm. and this is again, questions. It's okay for me to say that because this, these are expected questions for, for the, yeah, uh, the these record. are kind of common. Yeah, yeah these are kind yep. of common things. I think we observe this kind of uh, um, uh, problems in our MBA exams also. Like, if this is the result, so this is the what will be the interpretation of what you should do or take the this kind of things. I think I think it was very nice. I think we we tried to cover a lot of things. And uh, yeah, please, if you find any of the list, the book list or something, please share. With us, I will try to share with Dr. Richa. And in the meantime, uh, if if he, any of you have any questions for Dr. Bilal, please ask. Yeah. Dr. Bilal, this is Richa. So um, I did um, apply for the ABCC molecular certification exam, and that itself was a big deal because they asked for. And I am working as a lab direct operational lab director right now um, for a can, uh, for a <clears throat> medical center in Chicago. And in spite of that, they asked for so many uh, requirements for um, to prove that I am actually doing my job, like clinical consultancy examples and um, all those. So I was about to take the exam in August, but because the lab is so busy, I postponed it till February. So, oh, wow. um, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so um, and I was in the definitely in the mode of uh, preparing for the exam and now I've taken a break. Um, I will restart it in a, a month or so, but I wanted to know what was your background? So uh, are you a PhD and you did fellowship? Where did you do your fellowship and what experience did you have? Um, yeah. So if yeah. you could just talk something about that. You no, know, it's interesting that they actually asked you about, um, you know, about the clinical consultation background. I guess maybe that's the question why you guys were asking about the logbook. So maybe, I mean, I, I can see one thing or a couple of things. One is, you know, they, they changed their, their, you know, um, requirements. So maybe now they're asking more stringently. Uh, and I know one friend of mine, um, who I trained myself actually for one year, uh, and he didn't go through a, a, an official fellowship, but he applied for ABCC and, and I wrote him a recommendation letter, of course, I'm, I'm, of course, ABCC molecular diagnostics, uh, and they, you know, they gave him a hard time. So he ended up with HCLD ABB very easily. Got the got the question, and now he's an associate director in one of the 
molecular you know genetics lab in Indiana. So uh, as far as you know my background, I think the reason maybe I got it a little bit easier with the ABCC is because I made it very clear that I went through a CPEP fellowship in immunology. Um, and I think the CPEP is College for Postgraduate Educational Program or something like that. And CPEP fellowship, if you're not familiar with them, they're, they're fellowship that kind of like the clinical chemistry fellowship, they're there to train a, a director or a PhD, even a PhD in chemistry, for example, to lead a diagnostic laboratory. So if they go through a certified two-year fellowship, uh, whether it's, again, chemistry, immunology, or, or transplant, uh, or microbiology or or whatever and these are certified fellowships now and so you go through them and generally after two years you're allowed to take that specialty exam you go through immunology you take the abmli exam you go through transplant you take the abhi exam you know um, abmgg they have their specific fellowships you take the abmgg exam and so when when the exam review committee looks at that they already know you went through a certified program and some some you know guidelines some checklists that they know they want checked and so now they're not going to say well provide me with clinical consultation uh you know logbook or something they already know you you did that they're familiar with the programs and some of them actually are part of the programs are the ones who make the program um, or actually inspect the program so my back so then you know for me um I'm, I guess, so I got, I'm a clinical laboratory scientist. Um, so that's how I was exposed to the clinical lab. And then I went on to do a PhD in immunology. Um, and my PhD in immunology really was like biochemistry, cellular immunology, and molecular biology. I was, that was basically it. I mean, it's called immunology, but I was engineering viruses and cloning a lot. So it's like half of it was molecular biology. And so in that case, my PhD mentor actually wrote one of my recommendation letters to ABCC telling them that like, this guy was doing molecular biology and, and like you can see the publications here and there. I mean, I even published something in how to clone lentiviruses and infect T cells. So I was able to prove that, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, as far as like techniques, I know molecular biology. But then I was also able to prove that, hey, I went through a clinical immunology fellowship, uh, which of course is clinical immunology and diagnostic immunology, but about 40, 30% of it is, um, was molecular diagnostics. And so what my experience there, what also helped me that I was, my first project was, I had an Illumina MySeq sitting in a box and they were like, all right, you got to validate an HLA NGS protocol to stray away from the, you know, the typical um, SSP or, you know, single primer uh, protocol. So then, you know, I was saying like, hey, well, I built the NGS laboratory, I did this and I did that. I am also a, a, a clinical fellow uh, through a certified program. And I think that's maybe what, because may, I didn't get any of these questions. I just, and then of course, like I said earlier, I showed them my, certi my, my approval to sit for the TSABB exam. Um, and, you know, and uh, they were like, all right, he was already approved by another committee. He went through a, through a fellowship. Um, he did a ton of molecular biology in, in, you know, in PhD years. And he was, already, you know, we already know that he was a supervisor and doing clinical consultation and he built the NGS lab and all right, okay, it makes sense. And so, yeah, so I think what's happening is with ABCC it might be tougher to get through them. And I've seen that again with my friend. Um, he did a ton of molecular biology, but he only did like one year of, of fellowship and, and then another year at, in, in a clinical lab and they didn't want to take him. Um, so it's a combination of like, what you did as your background, did you go through an official fellowship and maybe changing of their criteria, be, becoming more stringent. And for that reason, I think the ABB is actually better because one, you're going to take the ABCC. It looks really nice because everybody knows ABCC, but ABBB is, is, is out there. It's people know, people know what's going on. It's listed under, you know, CMS. Um, and it's also acceptable by all these, you know, by these, you know, I guess hard to, Please states like New York and uh, you know in California. So, what I would do if I were you, I mean, I would maybe go for the ABB. To be honest with you, uh, it's going to be annoying traveling and doing a scantron sheet test, but it's it's a really I, I mean that's what I would recommend for anyone to do right now. If you can get through ABCC, great. Um, you may need more time from them, um, or maybe maybe they're already okay with you, but they just want you to do more work to prove that you were doing all of this from, you know, uh, from their point of view, they want to give you a certificate so that now when you're out, you're not just a lab director, but you're, you're actually off as a clinical 
legal clinical consultant in, in laboratory medicine. Um, you know, that's what really approves, it approves you, you know, to do. But in my opinion, they still do the same thing. I mean, you're a lab director and you're the clinical consultant. Yeah, you can get a clinical consultant certificate from ABB, but that looks nicer. Uh, but I, I don't think it's really such a big deal. And, you know, um, once you get the ABB, I mean, a lot of times you end up being an associate director for a little time. So at that time, you know, you can gather some more experience and, you know, uh, be a clinical consultant, do what you need to do in molecular you know, laboratories, and then reapply for ABCC. But in that case, is it really required? I would say no. Um, it, you know, might as well just take <laughs> go for the BCLD. Uh, but, you know, again, for me, the reason I went for ABCC is just when I finished ABB or like, they wanted four years. And I was like, I think either like two and a half or three years in, I was like, no, I, I, need, a, I need a certificate. I was supposed to take the ABMLI right away, but they phased that out. So now I don't have a certificate. Um, so I just went with ABCC. And uh, luckily the process was a little easier just because I was able to explain myself a little. But like, as far as my background, your background, as far as molecular biology, I think it's the same. It's just that, you know, it'll be harder for them to see you know, if to prove, you know, to be comfortable that, okay, you're involved in clinical consultation, um, like which, which you have to do in an actual certified fellowship. I mean, they make you do these things and they're familiar with it. And so they're, they're easier to accept from that case. I uh, hope that answered your question. Yeah, I think it clears up a lot of things. Um, you are right. Like New York is a little bit <laughs> difficult, but yeah, it it accepts ABB. So I feel like uh, for me or for Kelly who passed the SMB, and you, in future, if uh, we uh, our plan is to take it maybe next year or following year, so we will will target for ABB. But for Doctor Richard, I think uh, she already <laughs> already. Uh, got the confirmations from ABCC, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, Dr. Richard will take the exams very soon. Um, any other questions, uh, Dr. Richard? Um, um, if if not, uh, I think uh, thank you so much. I have no other question. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, Bilal. Yeah, thank no you. Thank you so much. I think we, we took almost one hour. How the time flies, <laughs> I did not realize, <laughs> but it was it was very nice and in-depth discussions. And uh, I feel like it will be very much helpful for um, a lot of uh, people. Thank you so much. And please uh, share any of the study materials or any of the things that you have, uh, and uh, maybe it will be helpful for us. So. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining. And uh, if we have any questions, uh, I think I will uh, email you or try to uh, connect with you and uh, ask you the question. Absolutely. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, great to meet all of you here um, online. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other questions. We can again do this some other time if there's any you know need for follow-up for sure. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. And I wish you a happy, have a nice day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.